Um, but I remember this one run that I went on. Um, it was kind of a hilly run and I went four miles. And when I went on that four miles, I went back home and I started feeling a little bit of discomfort. And that's when I decided maybe this isn't something I want to take a risk with. Because if it happens to me again, I don't know if I might wake up the next time. I've been through a lot, I would say. Um, I think the worst part of it all is seeing how it has affected my relatives, my loved ones, my friends. Um, and November 9th, I was racing at Melrose Games and I collapsed. Um, my heart stopped and I was rushed to the hospital where they had to put me on ice basically just so I wouldn't get brain damage or my um, organs wouldn't fail. And I woke up Monday morning um, with, uh, I was told it was evening, but for me it seemed like morning. Um, I was told that I passed out. I thought it was just from dehydration. Then they told me, yeah, your heart stopped. And I looked at my brother's face and I could see he was very emotional. And right then and then, <laughs> all that, it's, all that emotion started like flowing through me. I started understanding that situations like this doesn't just affect me, it affects the people around you. And from then on, I just try to be as healthy as possible and try to just um, f focus on what I'm doing and even try to educate people about um, what happened to me. I can't remember what happened. Um, the process has been hard, I guess, because I haven't learned, I haven't really learned what happened. I just knew um, some days in practice when I was working out, I felt like I couldn't breathe and I thought it was just some kind of exercise induced asthma and my heart, would, heart rate would spike, but I didn't take it as anything because obviously you're a distance runner, your heart's going to be, heart rate's going to be pretty high. And um, after everything happened, I'm just kind of piecing everything together. Maybe I was running and I felt it and I decided, hey, I'm pacing, might as well push through it. It's just something you need to just overcome. And it led to that. But when people tell me about it, then I'm starting to see where what I'm saying kind of makes sense. Um, it's still been tough just, <laughs> just, learn, just listening to people talking about it. Um, at the end of the day, I'm the one who was involved and even the video, I still haven't watched the video because, and I've never watched the video because I don't want to see myself at that, as that person who is, for me, that was a moment of weakness, I would say. I always thought of myself as, oh, I'm this distance runner who, I'm the healthiest person on earth because you're running, I'm running miles and miles for weeks. And a person who runs miles, you'll think they're the healthiest person, their heart's pretty strong. And for me, that was, all that just went out the window after the incident happened. So when I think about it, I, it's a tough process even hearing about it now. And I just think it's something that I'm gonna have to just learn to accept. And I would say even try to get over it, but it's, it, I basically died. So there's no getting over that. You're always gonna remember that this happened to you. It's just learning how to deal with it and sharing your story with people and trying to help them to be their best. Um, I guess the process like with adapting with the defibrillator is that um, it hasn't been tough. Um, the, first, the first day when I got it, obviously, I was in serious pain. Um, there was a huge um, surgical um, slice in my side and I couldn't lay on my left side at all. Every time I laid there, it would just be agony. So. I'd have to sleep on my right, which was pretty uncomfortable when you're on your right for 24-7. But um, now I've gotten so used to it, I don't even realize it's there. It's just a part of me now. Um, the only, I'd say the only time it really affects me is if I'm putting the seatbelt on and the seatbelt swings up too hard. It might hit me on it, which kind of hurts. But um, other than that, I can sleep on it. I can, it's like just a part of me now. 
Um, I decided to retire um, because of what the doctors told me. Um, when I was in the hospital, I was so optimistic about coming running again. I wanted to be that person where I could inspire people who have gone through traumatic experience. I wanted to inspire them to come out and do their best no matter what. And for months, I was just relaxing to make sure I, my heart would heal the best it can. And um, my last visit to the doctors in New York, they told me, listen, we want you just doing 20, 20 minutes per day, if you can't do it per day, and just leave it right there. And I started doing that. Um, but I remember this one run that I went on. Um, it was kind of a hilly run. And I went four miles. And when I went on that four miles, I went back home and I started feeling a little bit of discomfort. And that's when I decided maybe this isn't something I want to take a risk with. Because if it happens to me again, I don't know if I might wake up the next time. And then I talked to the doctors there and I had my doctor move to Virginia. And the doctor in Virginia just took, um, after I went through a couple of tests, um, with the EKGs and echocardiogram, they told me my heart hadn't improved by much. So I should just end it. And that's when I decided I was just going to make the hard decision and just end my career. Seeing that much people pull for me, it, it was overwhelming, um, while I was, especially when I was in the hospital. Um, I didn't think that much people cared until I started seeing my inbox loaded with messages. Um, Instagram inbox loaded with messages. And it was just messages of people praying and saying they, um, they hope I get well and hope I can get back to it, which um, kind of helped me to look at it as a more posit in a positive light, I would say. Um, I wasn't looking at, looking at it as this happened to me, this is unfair. Because obviously, yes, I think it was unfair, but at the same time, I couldn't do anything about it. It was just something that happened. And seeing that much people um, pouring out their hearts and trying to help me just to overcome such a difficult time, I was very, very happy. And it just comes to show you how tight-knitted the running community is. Trying to make people more aware, um, I think we, I've been trying to connect with a few um, campaigns and also foundations. Um, the, Heart, the Heart Foundation of Jamaica contacted me and they wanted me to come to one of their 5Ks just to be around and like kind of inform people about that. Um, I was working with um, I Too Have a Heart campaign that's also in Jamaica. Um, they're trying to spread awareness for heart disease. Um, I was working with Team Jamaica Bickley again. Um, they're providing AEDs for high schools in Jamaica because um, obviously it, uh, AED saved my life. Um, so those are a few things that I've um, been doing. And every now and then I show people like, hey, I'm out here still running, go out, run. And then I'd mention something about, hey, like just using my um, Instagram platform, um, you guys can just make sure you get your checkups. Uh, it definitely helps if I had gotten my checkup I probably wouldn't have been in that situation, so don't make my mistake and just learn from someone who has been through it.